Oh yeah, and as a byproduct of this, we also get to take in the whole of Metro 4, which I haven't done since it opened. Well, it opened in March 2014, and I went in March 2015. So let's explore the Metro 4, Budapest's newest Metro line, which is also pretty architecturally spectacular. Budapest's main international station um, for which this whole new kind of under, under concourse underneath the main public square was built as part of the Metro 4. It's also an interchange with the Metro 2 which is slightly older and less spectacular, not that interesting which is why we're not going to do it all. Although the Metro 2 has a bit overground which the Metro 4 doesn't but we've done it before so it's not that interesting. We've done this before as well, but hard drive failure means that we don't have any evidence of it. Here's Kelty. Kelty's actually the station here. Um, it's pretty drab relative to most of the Metro 4 stations. The city of Budapest currently has four Metro lines. The first line is the oldest and stands out from the rest for being much shorter, much smaller, subsurface and far less practical and more symbolic than the others. Most residents informally know it as the Fuldalati or Kishfuldalati, Little Underground. It opened in 1896 to mark the 1,000 year anniversary of the arrival of the Hungarian tribes in the area that is today Hungary and a bit of the neighbouring countries too. It was the second to open in the world after London's. Most Hungarians prefer to call it as the first in continental Europe. The other three lines are built in deep tube tunnels and are much longer in length and serve a much more functional role in Budapest's public transport. Lines 2 and 3 came about during the socialist era, opening between 1970 and 1972, and 1976 and 1990 respectively. The fourth line, which would offer a second metro route to Buda in the west, was originally proposed in the 70, but was scrapped. The scheme was revived in 2004, but construction ran into a number of major engineering and funding issues, being delayed a total of 17 times. Delays and spiralling costs of the scheme quickly became highly politicised and caused much controversy. The line was reduced in length from the original plans, with the suburban extensions dropped, and the first section between Kelleti and Kellenfield finally opened in 2014. One of the major cost issues was the insistence that the metro be built in architectural grandeur, which it was. Unlike the tube tunnels, the stations themselves were built in cut and cover, offering enormous high roofs and spectacular platform spaces. Each station has a totally unique design. Plans are now in the pipeline for integrating the suburban Hive network within the metro system, with plans to link the Metro 2 with the Hive lines 8 and 9 at Urschwezerte, and to connect the Hive lines 5, 6 and 7 with a new cross Budapest tunnel to be known as the Metro 5. The extensions of the Metro 4 out to Zuglo and the suburbs, as well as the much needed Line 3 extension to the airport are also on the cards, but we'll save all that for another video. The Metro 4 opened to passengers in March of 2014. My grandpa was actually a civil engineer who worked on the project, specifically at Morin Sigmund Kurtier, the construction of which I actually got to take a look at many years ago. We rode the length of the line in May 2014, but the footage from that was sadly lost when my hard drive failed in March 2015. So this year we finally decided to go back and ride the length of the line to regain the footage and make this video. Enjoy! It's also relatively shallow. And that looks like it's going to be our train. Did I mention they're driverless now? where you can change to the 4 and 6.
And here we are at St. Galecto with the epilepsy inducing spiral mosaics. Ah! Apparently it won an award. It's a pretty cool station. Shigmok Kurtu with the lovely Lego block kind of design, very cool. Now, so the Metro 4 stations were, the stations were built cut and cover and the actual tunnels were tunnel boring machines and I remember quite clearly this station as it was being built, this massive open pit, kind of open pit type construction site uh, because my grandpa who actually worked on this stop helped to build it and he was able to take us along so I'll tell you if you Meg, but no, sorry, I told you if you did that Meg. If you did that Meg. You're so cute, you're so cute. You know, that nitrogen will be able to Az volt a terv, hogy hosszúabb lenne a meccson is. Igen, arról volt szó, hogy elmegy egészen a egyik irányba a Rákos Patakig, a másik irányba pedig a gazdag rétig. De hát a politikai okok meg egyéb más gazdasági okok megakadályozták, hogy ezt végigcsinálják. Úgyhogy ezt így csak egy 7,2 vagy 7,6 km hosszú so since the Metro 4 went driverless, the driver cabs were actually taken out and you can actually now kind of sit at the front, like the DLR, which is pretty cool. Here we are, Ud Budakas Bund. In Keleti, the trains come here, then continue on, and then reverse, come back to the other platform. So that was the Metro 4 in a nutshell. Basically, just redid a video I did in 2014, but lost in the hard drive failure. So now you get to see the cool architecture and everything. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe. I'm going to go train spotting. and we arrived here yesterday by train in a very large storm uh, my dad's flown home now now I'm still on the lake and mum and I are in the flat and today I'm going out with my grandpa to visit the Vosho Turteneti Museum so Keleti is an interesting station because you've got the main building but there are only four platforms that actually come into the main building to see the rest you have to go through it and outside where it's much wider so this is the kind of symbolic area where most of the main intercity and sleeper the sleeper trains in the morning arrive although I think we are too late for sleeper trains oh well let's see what else there is to see 
at Kennedy. Welcome to a very Hungarian episode of Train Spotting.